Hello, welcome to another year of Yusuko. The December contest of 2020 just happened actually two weeks ago, and I competed in the gold division. I didn't do so well, actually. I scored around 280, so that was not, nowhere near enough to make the cutoff. It was 600, so I solved partials on all three problems. I need to do more practice, obviously, and I need to learn C++ instead of just using Python. But that's irrelevant. Today we're going to be explaining the bronze problem. And yes, I know that Carrara already made a video about this. You should go check it out, by the way. They do an explanation uh, of the contest in C++. But today, I figured I, I should make a USACO video too, you know? This is a tradition. And I should make it relatively soon. So today we're just going to be explaining the bronze problems. Uh, but first, here's a time lapse of me solving all the problems really quickly to make it look pretty impressive. So let's just dive right into the problems. Problem one, do you know your ABCs? I don't really want to read it because that's going to take up half of the video. So I'm just going to explain the problem basically. So uh, the cows are going to play a game. And basically they have three integers, A, B, C. They're in order from smallest to largest. We don't know which is which. We are given these seven quantities, A, B, C, A plus B, B plus C, C plus A, and the sum of all three. Again, we don't know the order, but we're trying to find A, B, and C, like in that order. So how do we actually do this? Well, it's not too difficult, actually. So we are given A, B, C, A plus B, B plus C, A plus C, or C plus A, and then A plus B plus C. So since A is the smallest, A is going to be smaller than any of the other quantities. So A is going to have to be the smallest of these quantities. We know that A is less than or equal to B is less than or equal to C. So obviously, B is going to be the second smallest because C is going to be greater than B. A plus B is obviously going to be greater than B. B plus C is obviously going to be greater than B. A plus C is going to be greater than B because C is greater than B. And A plus B plus C is obviously greater than B. So A is smallest and B is second smallest. We can't just immediately say now that C is third smallest because it could be the case that A plus B is actually less than C. For example, if it was like 1, 1, and 4. So we know that A plus B plus C has to be the largest because all these numbers are positive integers and it's just obviously the largest because it contains everything else. So A plus B plus C is largest. Once we have A plus B plus C, we can just do A plus B plus C minus A minus B, and this gets us C. So what we actually do in our program, in Usico, they're actually switching the input to be standard input and output instead of reading from a file, which I think is pretty good. I think that's, I think that's what they should do. So what we need to do is basically we just read the input uh, using Python standard input, which you can do sys dot standard in, or you can just do the input statement. And this gives us a string without the new line at the end. So we split it up. Oh, I guess I should make this text bigger. So we split it up using space. Then we have seven integers, all separated by a space in a list. We convert all those to integers using list comprehension. This is what this statement does. It basically just takes a list and then it does an action on every element on the list and returns a new list. So if you don't know about list comprehension, you should check that out. So now we have all the numbers in a list of integers in Python. Now we need to sort them because we need the smallest, the second smallest, and the largest values. Once we sort them, we get the smallest value. This is a, just the zeroth index of the array. We know the smallest value is A. The second smallest value has to be B. And the largest value is A plus B plus C. And this, so this is the last element in the array. In Python, you can access it by using an, uh, an array index of negative one that actually returns the last element, which is something you should also know. So we know that this is a plus b plus c, we subtract a, we subtract b, and we get c. So now we have a, b, and c, we just print it out, and we're done. So this is pretty good. I think this problem is more just like training your ability to solve a simple problem. It's not too difficult. Uh, just test your reasoning and your ability to read, because these are all positive integers. So let's move on to the second problem. Problem two, daisy chains. So I'm not going to read the problem again, because again, that would take way too long. But basically, there are n flowers ranged in a row and Bessie the cow is going to take a photo of every consecutive subsequence of these flowers. For every photo it contains flowers i to j, uh, we want to see if there is an average flower inside this range from i to j of flowers. And basically we define an average flower to be a flower that has an average number of petals in that range. We want to know how many of these total photos so out of all possible consecutive sequences, how many of these photos have an average flower? 
So how we do this, we brute force it. So let's go to this one. So first of all, we just take our input. N is going to be the first line of our input. And then petals is going to be a list. Again, we use the same strategy as we did in the first problem. We take in the input, and then we split it up by spaces, and then we turn all of those into integers. So now we have a list of all the petals on the flowers in order. First, we define a function. It returns whether the photo that contains flowers i to j inclusive has an average flower. So we don't need to know how that works right now. I'll just go over the rest right now. Photos, this variable contains which photos have a average flower. So we go through all possible consecutive subsequences, and j is always going to be greater than i, so we just loop from i to n. So this, these two nested loops produce all possible consecutive ranges. If this range has an average flower using our function over here, which I'll explain in a minute, if it does, this is going to return true. If it's true, then this statement casts it to the integer one. So photos plus equals one. If this returns false, then it does nothing. That's how we do all the ranges. And then this function is going to help us determine whether a range of flowers has an average flower. So first we compute the average number of petals. Basically, we just sum all the petals of the flowers in this range using a slice of this list. In Python, you can take a subarray, a consecutive subarray, by just using this notation. Uh, you put a colon between the two endpoints that you want. It doesn't include the last endpoint, which is why we're doing j plus one. So this takes the appropriate slice. This is all the flowers in the photo. We take the sum of the number of petals there, and then we divide by how many flowers are in there. And since this is inclusive, we have to subtract the indices and then add one to account for, you know, the off by one error. Now we want to find if the no average number of petals is actually an integer, because if it's not an integer, then obviously no flower is going to have a non-integer number of petals. So if the average number of petals is not equal to its integer representation, then obviously it's not an integer. So we can return false. There is no such flower that has a non-integer number of petals. Otherwise, we just go through all flowers in the range, and if a given flower has the average number of petals, then we can return, yes, this range does have a flower with the average number of petals. And the rest I already explained before, we just go through every single subsequence or consecutive subsequence and keep a variable. And that's it. That's it for problem two. Okay, let's go on to problem three. Okay, problem three, stuck in a rut. So, I probably should actually read the entire problem here because it's going to explain it better than I can. Farmer John has recently expanded the size of his farm, so from the perspective of his cows, it is now effectively infinite in size. The cows think of the grazing area of the farm as an infinite 2D grid of square cells, each filled with delicious grass. Each of Farmer John's N cows, N is between 1 and 50, starts out in a different cell. Some start facing north and some start facing east. Every hour, every cow either stops if the grass in her current cell was already eaten by another cow, or eats all the grass in her current cell and moves one cell forward according to the direction she faces. Over time, each cow therefore leaves a barren rut of empty cells behind her. If two cows move onto the same grassy cell in the same move, they share the cell and continue moving in their respective directions in the next hour. Please determine the amount of grass eaten by each cow. Some cows never stop and therefore eat an infinite amount of grass. Our algorithm is basically going to work like this. So let's just take an example. So I'm just going to draw cows. So how do we determine how much grass a cow is going to eat? Well, we're going to determine where each cow is going to stop. This cow over here is just going to stop immediately because this cow over here is going to eat the cell of grass immediately in front of her. So this cow is just going to stop immediately. So we can mark that by saying the stop point of this cow is right here. And then the stop point of this cow is going to be over here because this cow over here is going to get to that cell before our original cow so she's just going to stop in the cell over here so you get the idea right we're just going to calculate where cows are going to stop and then once we figure out where every cow is going to stop we can just calculate how much the cows are going to move so this cow is going to go all the way over here this cow is going to go all the way over here to infinity so how do we actually find this well my algorithm is basically consider the north facing cows we're going to call these north cows. First we want to sort them by x coordinate because it makes it a little bit more convenient. So basically we look at every north cow. We start with this one. We're just going to loop up through the east cows. Those are going to be the cows that are facing east. East cows, we will call them east cows. We go through every east cow and for every east cow we consider where these two cows are going to meet. So this is our north cow. We're going to call it nc and for every east cow we're going to loop through the east cow in increasing y coordinates just to make it a little bit easier. 
So the first one to consider is this cow right here. So their meeting place is going to be right here. Okay, their meeting place is going to be right on our original cow. This doesn't usually happen, but it might happen sometimes. So this is their meeting place. The north cow is going to take zero hours to get there to meeting place. And the east cow is actually going to take one hour to get to the meeting place. So our north cow is going to get there before our east cow. And therefore our east cow is going to stop once it gets to the meeting place. We can determine that our east cow is just going to be sad and going to move nowhere and just stop right here. So next we move on to the next east cow. This east cow has basically no interaction with this north cow because this east cow is just going to move on in this direction. Its x coordinate is greater than a north cow's x coordinate. So these two cows never interact. So this cow we don't have to consider at all. Okay, so moving on, next east cow is this one over here. They meet at the same place. They take the same amount of time to get there. If it's equal, then nothing happens. So we just move on. Now this cow, this cow is pretty interesting. This is our east cow. This east cow and this north cow, they're going to meet at this location. They're both going to be at this cell eventually. So this cow is only going to take one hour to get there, our east cow. And our north cow, let's say, is going to take five hours to get there. So our east cow is going to get there before our north cow. East cow is going to block off north cow, and north cow is just going to go there and then be sad. So that's it for our north cow over here. Once our north cow stops, then we can't really do anything because the north cow is just not going to stop any other cows or do anything else. So that's it. Might look like a lot of code, but don't be intimidated because I write lots of redundant code. So first, we have north cows and east cows. We first parse n. This is going to be a first line in our input. And for the next n lines, we look at the line. We split it up by space. We take the first element that is split up by a space. It's either e or n. Uh, then we take the x and y coordinates of that cow, which is going to be the next two elements in our split up array. If the direction of this cow is north, then this cow is a north cow. Otherwise, it's an east cow. So if it's a north cow or an east cow, we just append the cow representation to the appropriate list. And the cow representation is going to be three elements. First is going to be the x-coordinate. Second is going to be the y-coordinate. And third is going to be its original index because we need to return how much grass each cow has eaten in, in the like original order. So we want to keep the original ordering. That's why we have their indexes here. Now we sort the north cows by x-coordinate and the east cows by y-coordinate. Now we have locations of where each cow stops. And this is going to be a coordinate. If it's none, then the cow just moves on forever. If it's a coordinate, then it describes where the cow is going to stop. Uh, and this is for the original indexing. So we go through every north cow. For every north cow, we go through every east cow. First, we have to make sure that their relative position is OK. So as I said before, if we have a north cow, and an east cow. The north cow's x coordinate, it has to be greater than the east cow's x coordinate. So this has to be greater. And the north cow's y coordinate has to be less than the east cow's y coordinate. And it's easy to see this if you draw this out. It's not so easy to see this if you just have it in your mind. So I'd recommend also having paper and pen close by when you're doing the Yusuko contest. All right, so we need to make sure that the north cow's x coordinate is greater than the east cow's x coordinate and north cow's y coordinate is less than the east cow's y coordinate. All right, now we have a meeting place. This meeting place is implied. We don't actually write out the coordinates of this meeting place. So how far does the north cow have to travel? Well, its original coordinate is NY, and it's the meeting uh, location's coordinates are EY. So the north cow has EY minus NY to travel. So we store this in a variable called NC to travel, north cow to travel. It describes how far the north cow has to travel. It's just the east cow's Y coordinate minus the north cow's Y coordinate. Similarly for the east cow, it's just how much it has to travel in the x direction. Now, if the north cow is going to get to the meeting place before the east cow, this is represented by north cow's traveling is going to be less than the east cow's traveling. And we also need to make sure that the east cow has not stopped yet. So it hasn't been stopped by an earlier cow. So for example, uh, this is like another cow over here. If another cow has already stopped this east cow, then the east cow is already going to stop here. And we don't have to worry about the east cow. So we need to make sure that the east cow hasn't stopped yet in order to actually perform our operation. So if our north cow is going to get through before our east cow and our east cow has not stopped yet, we need to stop the east cow. This is the east cow's original index. It's EC2. Remember, we're storing it at index 2. So the east cow's original index, we're just going to add that to stops. This describes where the east cow is going to stop. It's just going to stop at the meeting place. Otherwise, we actually have to consider the case where the north cow stops 
and the east cow moves on. If the north cow it takes longer to travel to the meeting place than the east cow, and the east cow hasn't stopped yet, or the east cow is going to stop at a later point, which actually we don't have to consider this. Sorry. So this is this is this is gone, and we have to make sure that the east cow hasn't stopped yet. Then the north cow is going to stop because the east cow is going to get there before us. So obviously we're going to have to stop. So we set the coordinates for the stopping location of our north cow, and we break because we don't want to stop any more east cows because our north cow is already stopped. So for example, if there was another east cow over here, E2Y, our north cow can't stop this east cow even if it's like way over here. So after this loop, we have successfully determined where all the cows are going to stop. And now all we need to do is determine how much each cow has eaten. So eaten is going to be an array describing how much each cow has eaten based on their original index. So for every one of the north cows, if the north cow does stop eventually, so if it's not none, if it's none, it's going to go on forever. So if it does stop eventually, we need to find out how much grass it's going to eat. So it's just its stopping location minus its original location. And by location, I mean Y coordinate. So we have a north cow over here. Let's just draw another diagram. So we have a north cow, north cow, and its Y coordinate is, for example, one. It's stopping at 10. So this is another cow's rut. This cow is only going to get to eat nine cells worth of grass. We do 10 minus one, which is just nine. Um, and the reason for this, the reason why there's no off by one error actually is because the cow doesn't actually eat the meeting place's grass because the other cow already ate it. So we know how much our north cow is going to eat. Similarly for these cows, we basically just duplicate the code, except we use east cow instead of north cow. And at the very end, we go through the eaten list. If it's negative one, it means it hasn't been modified, which means that this cow will not stop. So negative one, we just print out infinity because this cow is not going to stop. If it's not negative one though, it means we have modified it. This cow is going to stop, so we have to print out how much it's going to eat. So that's pretty much it for this program. Um, and that's it for this contest. So as always, the code's going to be in a GitHub repository. I'm going to push it later, but I could, I could push it right now. So why don't we do it actually right now? All right, and it's pushed to GitHub, so you can actually check it out at the link. I'm gonna put a link to this down in the description um, so you can check out the code and do any further investigation yourself if you wanna see it. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope it explained some stuff for you. This actually took a lot of work to make because the editing is obviously gonna take a long time. And I will come out with a video about gold probably sometime because I did gold and you can see I got 283, which is, Ranked 196, that ain't bad, but I think I can do better. So I'll make a video about this later. And as always, leave feedback. So thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Goodbye.